August 1st, 2018 marks the 50th anniversary of the National Flood Insurance Act, the guiding legislation of the National Flood Insurance Program. David Marstad is the chief executive of the Federal Emergency Management Agency's National Flood Insurance Program. We caught up with David to talk a little bit about the history of the program over 50 years and where it's going to go in the future. David, as we mark the 50th anniversary of the National Flood Insurance Program, can you give us a little history about how the program started? Well, the program was created with the National Flood Insurance Act uh, August 1st, 1968. But actually, the, the program was in the making uh, going clear back to the 1927 Midwest floods, which were uh, uh, probably the largest flood disaster in the uh, history of, uh, of our nation. And then in each decade, in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, various administrative proposals, various legislative proposals would surface to determine how we were going to manage the flood risk of, of the nation. 1965, Hurricane Betsy kind of put the dot on the exclamation point to say, hey, we've been talking about this for a long time. Let's put in place a program that includes private sector support, that involves uh, participation by the communities, and addresses the nation's flood risk for individuals and businesses. So David, you've worked in the National Flood Insurance Program in a number of different positions. What does the program mean to you? Well, the 50th anniversary is a time for us to reflect on a, a public policy program that's been delivering for the nation for the last uh, five decades, uh, is now in over 22,000 communities, uh, provides uh, floodplain management and building code protection in those communities that agree to participate in the program, and is offering flood insurance protection for uh, over 5 million policyholders, which means we have five million uh, individuals that if a flood disaster strikes them, regardless of whether it's a presidentially declared disaster or a localized regional flooding event, they have the means by which to get back on their feet, which makes them more resilient and their communities more resilient. So at this juncture, we're able to look back and say this program has, has great value to the nation. And uh, I also think about uh, all the people that have made this program work uh, over the years. Uh, the, the public service of, of those individuals that are uh, federal employees and also the tremendous private sector support that this program uh, depends upon and how it's delivered to the American public. Can you talk a little bit about how the private sector is involved in the program? Well, this, this from the very beginning of the program has been a very strong public-private uh, partnership. Uh, the, the way that it currently operates, we rely on 63 of the leading in property insurance companies in, in the nation to administer the program uh, on, our, on our behalf. Uh, in addition to those 63 companies, we also have a, a handful of vendors that support those companies and also support our NFIP Direct uh, program, which uh, policyholders can access if they don't have a relationship with one of the 63 companies. So this, this in, in the 22,000 communities that, uh, that participate in the program, um, every, every property owner in, that, uh, in those communities can access the program through NFIP Direct or the WIO companies. Then the WIO companies are supported by their agency staff, thousands of insurance agents across the country that, that actually sell and advise our product with their, with their customers, our customers, the policyholders. And then you have the independent adjusters the adjusting community that's out there at the time of a disaster, at the time of a claim, uh, helping the policyholder through that claims journey. So there are literally thousands of adjusters out there. So there, it's, it's, it has the public-private partnership is, is unique in that you have large company support and then you have a lot of small business support throughout the nation supporting our, our program and it's actually one of the strengths of the program. The National Flood Insurance Program is so much more than just selling insurance. It's really about managing the nation's risk. What are some of the accomplishments of the NFIP over the last 50 years? Well, uh, for the first time, we've been able to identify what the flood risk is because of the National Flood Insurance Program. There's been over a million miles of coastal and riverine flood risk that's been mapped for, for the nation. In the 22,000 uh, communities that participate in the program, any new construction is at the minimum federal standard or, or higher in the high-risk uh, flood area, which 
results in a little under two billion dollars of avoided losses uh, every every year. So the the flood the flood risk component of this, the mapping component of this, both provide information to communities and individuals by which they can then take actions to minimize their risk and become more resilient uh, if a disaster were to were to strike their their particular area. So how can individuals, communities, and businesses do more to manage their flood risk? Well, first of all, they don't want to look at it as just one action. They need to look at what mitigation activities do we need to be involved in, and then how do we, how do we work the insurance component into that? And so for individuals, it's know your risk, know where you are, uh, are you susceptible to uh, hurricane flooding? Are you susceptible to urban flooding? Are you susceptible to riverine flooding? What's my individual flood risk? And then once I identify that, am I in the high risk area? Am I in the medium to low risk area? Then are there steps I can take to minimize that, that risk? Can I flood proof in some way? Can I raise utilities so they're less, uh, less likely to be flooded and damaged? And then after I take those actions, then okay, I got to contact my insurance agent and talk about my homeowner's insurance. What kind of homeowner's insurance do I have? What kind of flood insurance coverage should I have? And then, and then make sure that when the discussion comes out of whether you're required to have it or whether you need it, you decide you go with, I need this. And so I, I go ahead and take the next step and buy the insurance coverage. I just don't get informed about it. At the community level, it's, okay, how do we best develop uh, in our community? What type of community and how resilient do we want to be? Maybe we don't zone a particular area for residential or commercial use because it's uh, more susceptible to flooding. Uh, but then in those areas that, that are in the high risk area, making sure that at the community level we have a enforcement process in place where we can make sure that the building that's going on through the permitting process at the local level is happening at the minimum federal standard and above so that that new construction is going to be stronger and more resilient than the, 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 the construction or the built infrastructure already is. So the program was really designed to address future building and then provide the insurance when we can't or not able to mitigate completely. So over 50 years, the National Flood Insurance Program has supported disaster survivors in numerous disasters around the country. What does it mean to the disaster survivor who has insurance versus someone who does not have insurance? Well, 75% of the declared disasters that FEMA supports are flood-related disasters. And then you have numerous regional flooding events that are occurring virtually all the time throughout the country that don't necessarily rise to the level of a presidentially declared disaster. And in every one of those, we unfortunately find that there are too many disaster survivors that don't have the necessary insurance protection. We're working, we're dedicated to closing that insurance gap because the insured survivor has a path forward. They have the proceeds to get back on their feet, to start the rebuilding. The uninsured survivor has to rely on limited disaster assistance or the volunteer uh, community to assist them in some way or another. And it's a very different path, very uncertain path. And so this is really about uh, more people needing the right insurance coverage, closing the insurance gap. And in, in our program area, that means more people with a flood insurance policy because that means less disaster suffering. If we can have more people with an insurance policy that have taken the necessary steps before the disaster, then the community responds quicker, the individuals have a whole uh, brighter path forward, uh, and, and that's what we're focused on. How can we make sure we have less disaster suffering? And one of the key ways, as our administrator has said, is uh, insurance is the first line of defense. So we want people to have a flood insurance policy. The National Flood Insurance Program is the largest single peril insurance operation in the world. And right now it is in the process of reauthorization. And some have said that the program is complex, both for the communities that we serve, but also for the policyholders. So where should the program be in the future? Well, as we look back on the, on the legacy of the last 50 years, and as you indicated, as, as a, as a world-class operation, which we strive to be, we're always about continuous Im, Im, improvement. How can the program better serve the nation? 
So we're looking at doing things like developing a new suite of insurance products to modernize the actual insurance policy that our consumer, that we're asking our consumer and our policyholders to purchase and our agents to sell and our adjusters to adjust from. So we're simplifying, making it less complex, the actual insurance policy. We're also looking at the way we rate uh, the insurance premium, how we go about calculating what's the right uh, amount for you to pay at your property for this, for this policy. And then we're working on the claims experience because at the end of the day, an insurance policy is about you know, what happens when I have to call up my agent and say, I've got a, I've got a possible, uh, possible claim here. And so we're working on the claims experience so people will value and trust the, the policy that they've, that, they've, that they've purchased. We're also doing things in the mitigation area and the floodplain management area to make sure that those are effective as we move forward and support the insurance operation as the program was developed and designed.